Hi traders, uh, Nick here. I wanted to recap today's action Monday the 30th uh, via video. Uh, I don't feel like I want to type everything uh, that's on my mind. So um, I may jump around a little bit, but I think I'll get the point across a little better. Today was option expiration for quarterlies. Um, and uh, so I think that drove a lot of the f at late day action, I guess. Throughout the whole day, uh, stalemate continued. I said we we're nobody's going to run away with the ball. Right around here, if you can see right here, right around here, um, I thought that you know that we were squeezing for a move. Uh, the you know direction was unknown. It turns out it was both ways. It went up and then went back down. Okay, so things looked a little bit like okay uh, now they're coming into sanity and uh, they're not running away with it. Nobody's going to run away with the ball. Nobody by by that I mean no bulls, no bears. And then you get these. Uh, the size of the candle here tells you the volume involved. So you can see all day, you can barely see the volume, and then bam, 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 bam. So tell me this is not end of quarter maneuvering. It obviously is, um, or something going on. So uh, I'll uh, vote for the quarter uh, shenanigans. Uh, same thing with the uh, small caps, um, you know, late all day it looked like it was going to cap, it was going to cap, and then it looked pretty weak into the close, head and shoulderish everywhere until boom, boom, you know, to the close. So now that we got that contract out of the way by tomorrow, I should say we would have that contract out of the way, then we can uh, go about our business and uh, trade some fundamentals until Thursday, which is uh, a pretty important day because of the GDP issues. So anyway, uh, this is the uh, beloved Apple. Uh, you can see I put circles where I thought it was head and shoulder-ish in nature. It was everywhere as far as the one minute is concerned, intraday. Uh, long term, that doesn't matter much, but intraday. And I said, don't chase it. I said 92 was supposed to be resistance. It is. I just can't explain the chug up. I said that I couldn't explain it on Friday. Late Friday started that. Let me see if I can see it it's right here, OK? And then uh, I don't know why it's just chugging up. Last time it did that, it was the actual company buy in itself um, in the open market, uh, beyond above and beyond the um, the t -t -t the planned purchases that they announced. So anyway, uh, you can see the per the buying still continues after hours. Um, the the fact that I can't explain it gets me out of it from a full position standpoint. Somebody suggested, what about uh, a full position at 100, 105? I don't have any faith in it. I mean, it might be good. I, I just don't know what's going on. And in order for me to put some money on the line, and by money I mean the full position, I need to know, or at least half position, I need to know what's going on. Until then, I'll uh, play the lottos if I need to. Uh, so this was Apple strong, 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 and then suddenly weak into the close. Google was not strong, but also weak into the close, and I think they were all saved by the bell because Google would have probably ended up under five hundred eighty-four dollars. Uh, the TLT was uh, for a while. I, I sent earlier a message today that the, the markets were trading uh, inversely with the TLT. This was the run-up of the TLT while the markets went down, and the yen, and inversely the uh, the the ten-year rates. Are represented here we were running up with the markets when they were running up and then for some reason they fizzled and now it's back down to 25 almost so we're this is this is what concerned traders a while back but for some reason they're not concentrating on it right now but I still watch it one of these days I'll care about it again so up until then uh, I wanted to also show a couple of stocks here Priceline I said around here that they were gonna get tired defending this right here all day they've been they had been knocking on the floorboard from lower highs and then eventually the bulls will get tired of defending that floorboard which is 1205 ish six ish something like that and then break down and I made uh, the comment and soon thereafter it went down and I made the same comment on Chipotle which you know I am short via a lotto I don't short it via credit call spreads because that bad boy punishes people like that. But again, floorboard right here at the same time, right around here, I made the same comment um, to, I noted, I made the same note, I should say, that they're knocking on the floorboard from lower highs, lower, 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 and then just trading this. And eventually the bulls will get tired of defending the floorboard. Sometimes they bounce, but more often than not, they don't bounce. And now it's down to 592. Now the spread I bought, it now shows that it's cheaper, which means I lost money. But I bet you anything, if you go to buy it right now at the 
premium of chose, it won't let you. It probably will ask you for 70 or 80 cents, which, is, which means I'm in the green. I'm not going to argue with it. I'm sitting on it. Uh, it's it's a, a lotto position, so when you buy a lotto ticket, you don't start, uh, you can't return it. I'm sticking with it. Uh, the cat caterpillar was another one that I said I was short lotto, and uh, in the morning it showed weakness, all going my way price wise. Again, still going my way price wise. However, the uh, premiums also misrepresented, but I'm still about even, so I'm not going to back off of it either. They're both G July positions, so I have about 19, 18 days to that. So I'm not going. Actually, um, the caterpillar I have even longer because I captured, I think earnings so probably about 26 days for that so that's even better I'm not in a rush to close either of those so these are lotto positions um, as far as what I'm I think is gonna happen tomorrow we don't have any economic uh, news locally coming out tomorrow I did not check internationally I'm so we, we will depend on whether or not we will get headlines from international news geopolitically you know I that's a hot buzz of mine because we need to look at the macro Geopolitically, for some reason, the uh, headlines were almost immune to the headlines. By we, I mean traders are not reacting to headlines. I mean, for me, Russia sending fighter jets to Iraq is pretty major. And uh, they did that to protect uh, little sister Syria, which is under the wings of Russia for decades. And uh, that's why the jet fighter MiGs probably are there to help combat um, the new insurgents, I ISIS, who are threatening the, the globe down there. They want Jordan, they want Syria, they want everybody. So, but for some reason, Wall Street is not worried. I am. It's on my uh, things to watch. So uh, these are the basics. Uh, tomorrow, the I'll see how the overnight markets react to most, mostly the Asian markets. Uh, Japan and China, what, what are they going to do? And then I'll get a hint from uh, what Europe is going to do. And I'll pay attention to Germany more than the other ones because we seem to trade with them. Plus, they're the belly button of the uh, Ukraine situation with Russia. They are for, kind of friends with Russia on the, on the leader side. So what they think and do and not say and not back up with the Western world is important. Don't know exactly when the ceasefire gets ex expires in Ukraine, but I think they've already broken it because I'm pretty sure I read headlines that there was fighting some places. So that's kind of a ceasefire that's not a ceasefire or not 100%. Uh, having lived in a war zone, I know how that goes, but usually when one bullet is fired, nobody talks about ceasefires anymore because it's not everywhere. Regardless, I'm not going to, I'm going to reserve judgment as to the real market action. I mean, they say today was bullish, uh, just like Friday. You heard me say, yes, it was bullish, but no, it wasn't bullish. Well, yeah, the small caps were up. Um, the, the NASDAQ was a little bit up. And let's see what the NASDAQ was up about. I think it was up about Apple. There's Apple here offset by Microsoft. Uh, Amazon was a little bit green. No, nope, flattish. Uh, Cisco, um, Micron was up 5%, so that helped a bit. It's a good size stock, you know. So anyway, uh, the NASDAQ is up. It's probably most likely on the backs of Momos, uh, but not the big Momos that I care about. Netflix, Priceline, uh, Amazon's flat. Uh, LinkedIn, big, up almost 3%. Uh, CRM, up. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so on the theme of bullish day, the VIX is up almost 3% closed uh, it was up over four percent during the day the SBX is red flattish to red and the Dow is red so I don't buy the bullishness I, I'm not saying doom but I'm not worried about some shorts uh, especially the ones that are up and about and um, I, I look down my watch list and I'm, I'm trying to see where where all this bullishness say okay we've got some strength in the um, um, financials uh, but not, not by a lot and um, retail Lulu flat uh, coach red uh, okay uh, transports I guess I would consider that uh, FDX flat FedEx uh, Panera slightly up uh, PXD has some issues um, Zillow's up um, so GM is down but we all know the news there um, I grabbed a handful of puts just in case we have another shoot and drop tomorrow on GM. That's my lotto ticket for this week. Uh, I didn't tell anybody because I don't want anybody to waste their money. I feel it's almost like I threw away my money, but I just 
don't want to kick myself in the fanny after the fact. I'd rather waste 100 bucks. Um, so the news is still the same as Friday. I feel like saying uh, just hit the replay and Friday all the same. And uh, the premiums are all over the board, and I don't think they're representing proper price action as far as options are concerned. So tomorrow I'm going to have to come up with something in order to burn that theta. And this week, you know, I had a couple of plays. I just couldn't pull the trigger. I just couldn't put your money and my money and my family's money in the way of harm's in the harm's way on the downside. Um, so maybe tomorrow I'll get gutsier and uh, do something about that. But until then, there, I see a few levels that are defendable on the upside and the downside. So I'll share it with the members in the morning. Until then, also members, look out for the uh, pre-open newsletter, which will have new uh, levels. Today's levels on Apple broke down uh, because I can't explain it, but I said it going into it that this is where theoretically it should be, and it still may pan out by the end of the week, but today it didn't pan out, so it's not the right call there. On Google, they definitely panned out. Uh, you know the levels there. I'm not going to discuss them in the open public. Um, and all the other ones are within the ranges. So... To I'll catch up with you tomorrow morning. Until then, have a great evening. There's nothing to be done here after hours, so enjoy your evening. Again, Nick at um, Create Income with Option Spreads on MarketFi. Thank you.